want to continue um, with a similar aspect. So we, we're still in the business of operator application and getting this fast. And now we compare kind of the simple version against the tuned version in terms of this operator applications uh, and so on. And now the application is uh, acoustic wave equation uh, in, in time domain. So we have a vector value function u, so uh, the velocity and the pressure a scale of value p, uh, and, and you have this uh, standard uh, first order formulation of the of the, the wave equation. Okay, so uh, we consider uh, simple geometry, so unit square, you know it already very well, and we want to formulate a formulation which is um, uh, structure pre preserving in the sense that we have the same bilinear form involved to discretize the, the gradient uh, and at the same time the, the divergence of, of u. Uh, and this is this bilinear form here. So we, we again use uh, discontinuous polynomials, order k plus one for the pressure and order k uh, vector valued for the velocity in every element. And uh, the formulation um, is obtained by essentially uh, formulating this. So for example, if you start with the divergence of u, you do partial integration, uh, you have to put in some numerical flux. And here the numerical flux, we just use a centered approximation, so we have energy conserving uh, uh, scheme, uh, which is perhaps not the best, but for our purposes here, it, it suffices, it's a, it's a, it's a reasonable um, guy at least. So order six polynomials for the pressure, uh, order k plus one, so order seven even, um, we have this flex all DOFs together, which means there's no low order, high order separation in the, in the numbering of the, f of the degrees of freedoms. Um, we use a uh, um, discontinuous vector L2. So vector L2 is the analog to the vector H1 that we saw. So it's a vector valued version of the, uh, so, um, of the uh, L2 function. And now we have the flag Piola. Uh, so we have the Piola mapping that we need in order to get something which is geometry free, free as we saw before. Okay, and that's, we put this together in a product space. Okay. Um, yeah, so just a remark again on this Piola flag. So uh, the Piola flag essentially means how we evaluate function on the physical domain depending on the function on the reference domain. If you don't do any flag, so no Piola, then you get just get the direct mapping, so the standard one. If you do Piola true, then you get the Piola transformation, and you can also do covariant transformation if you're having uh, some H curl, some Maxwell problem, or something like that. Um, okay, so this then goes accordingly. Um, okay, so now we, we want to work on, the, on this product space, um, and we will need for the explicit time stepping that we want to use, uh, want to apply mass matrix inverses, again, these fast operators that are provided by the spaces, um, and now we set up corresponding operators for the blocks, and this is what you see here. So we want to have, we want to have this um, inverse operation just on the first block, and we obtain this by uh, using the inverse operation on uh, the, the pressure space, and then combining this with the com corresponding embeddings uh, from the pressure to the, to the product space. Okay, so the same accordingly for the velocity, so nothing fancy here. And then we um, define the time loop, where this time loop is now depending on the operators B and B transpose. Um, that should be some operator, which provides some operator uh, applications, some matrix applications. Uh, and then what we see here is a symplectic order discretization, um, so where we essentially just apply the, the minus B transpose uh, with the inverse of the mass matrix of the pressure space times the solution U. So this affects then um, the corresponding part because of this, these embeddings that should be involved. Uh, so once we updated um, the, in this case, the pressure, um, we make an update of the velocity with the new pressure. So that's a symplectic order scheme. And for fun, we also implemented kind of the backward step, so we can put this time loop that we have here, not going forward in time, but work for backward in time. Um, okay, so this is the, the run function that we'll use later on to evaluate the performance of different formulations. We prescribe some initial uh, 
function initial values for the pressure. So this is kind of the, the pressure initial condition. There's no, so zero values for the velocity. So this is kind of a, this blob with a, which goes uh, to the interior as well. Um, and yeah, we want to take a look on how this evolves. And the first simple version that you could do is just write down what we know already very well. So just write down the bilinear form, uh, set non-assembled true, and just call the run function with the B mat and the B transpose mat. So first we solve the same problem forward in time and then the same amount of time backward in time. So that's what we'll see here uh, one moment in those two blocks. So sorry, not that fancy. So now it's going four seconds forward, six backward. If you run it multiple times, it should be uh, approximately <coughs> the same. So this is the amount of time that this approach takes. And now we want to see, can we, can we improve that? And for that, we want to use the trace operator and assembling of B. Now we have a linear problem, uh, so we could hope for uh, assembling the sparse matrices and applying those. Perhaps this is faster than, than applying the uh, operators only. Okay, for that, we define again the trace operation uh, that we saw before. Yeah, so we can go strictly through this. Um, okay, so corresponding basis functions now uh, for the uh, pressure space is this p hat. Okay, and we have uh, p and v. So now the um, splitting is the same as before, so we want to have a splitting into one part which just involves element local quantities and one part which involves the coupling between the traces and the uh, interior. Um, so this is B element and B trace parts um, where we write down what we had before. And again, P hat is the sum of the two neighboring traces. And this is kind of the, the, the way you write down the same formulation. So the center flux approximation that we had before now in this uh, with those, those variables and you put together uh, uh, a fitting operator by applying the corresponding embeddings from left and right. Okay, so let's see how this performs. Um, so it goes forward for some time. Goes backward for some time. Okay, so this is not even faster than wh what we had before. So version three is now uh, what we what, what we now did not exploit yet is the the fact that we have the possibility to exploit the geometry free integrals. So we have the Piola mapping uh, involved, and that's kind of what we want to want to exploit now in the, in the last step. So this is now the same setup as we as before. So trace operators and so on. But now we add the flag geometry free um, here. Okay, and this is uh, what we get for the assembly. So now that's the important part. So now we assemble the matrices, but these ma matrices are represented by just a few um, uh, element matrices due to these classes that, that, that Joachim already discussed. Okay, now the application, so that's what we want, with, well, what we are interested in now. Um, you see this is now almost a factor 10 faster than, than what we had before. Yeah, so here we really benefit from this geometry-free uh, combination uh, with the assembling uh, in the matrices. Yeah, so in the last unit in the last tutorial, we also used the geometry-free, but there we could only exploit this for setting up the integration rules and pre-computing the, uh, the, the operators. Uh, the wind was still depending on space, so on every element, obviously. Here we really have that there are just a few uh, element matrices which are, uh, which we can use for all other elements uh, at once.